dude, I, 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 this one, I think the one that one, that one night, I talked to Gimmer before we play, and he's like, hey, Gimmer, uh, does Ryu, how does Ryu do against Olimar? And, and then Gimmer just says, he washes him. And then that's it. And then I went Ryu, <laughs> I went Ryu and I 2 0 you for the first time ever. And I have the only time I've ever beaten you at that point in that game. All right, all right, that's enough going down memory lane. Yeah, right, you're right. Set. I'm we sorry. <laughs> Things are getting really heated, much like the heat that we're going to experience in this set between the Fire Cat and Falcon and the Princess Zelda, 17 versus Kowtow. Yeah, 17, he's actually out here a fair bit, even on the offline tournaments. Um, I think he made a couple of top eights that, um, like, regulars need to do. So, knows his way around Zelda, knows how to play the character. Kowtow, though, we saw his Falcon earlier, and it was looking pretty nice. Oh, that was actually a very good punish. Nice probably, uh, probably the best punish he could have gotten, even. I mean, Kowtow pulled that a couple times in the last set against, um, what was his name? Jumpman's Hero, but he also pulled that a couple times against Jump Jumpman's Hero, too. That's He's second really good at finding those knees. Incredible from Kowtow. Yeah. Yeah, 17, he's he's shown his stuff offline as well. I, I know for a fact that uh, Zelda, like a lot of people don't like playing against Zelda online, but this dude definitely can sauce offline. That knee was incredibly ridiculous, bro. Ooh. I don't know why in Kowtow's knees, they're just raw, no confirmed, just on point. Mm -hmm. Like You definitely got to cook it a bit first, but he's cooking with those knees. Like, that's the third or fourth raw knee I've seen connect on stream. He's been on stream for probably a total of six minutes tonight, including his previous set. <laughs> I don't know where he's finding this data, but keep doing it. I love it. Yeah, noticing a lot of uh, kind of risky, ad an adverse type of approach options from Kowtow. Okay, wow, a beak actually connects? I don't even know if he meant to hit, hello? Okay, bizarre. But yeah, he's like sometimes he tries to roll past the Phantom in those low charge situations, get caught. Tries to port Bakken and kick in neutral and doesn't get punished that time because uh, Zelda was a little bit too slow to catch up. But uh, some of these are a little bit questionable in terms of how he's trying to get in on uh, 17's passive gameplay. Ooh! How? One hit in there will do it, though. I mean, it's, it's, nice. Falcon, it's Falcon's nice. It's yeah, Falcon's Kata's nice. Cooking. Yeah, nice turnaround grab. Very good uh, dexterity on the part of Kata. And then that's another thing there. Like that, um, that Raptor boost, it would only cover one option if he's falling straight through. Oh, he tries to jump off the ledge with 17. Actually conditioned him to uh, expect a delay. So because of that, he ended up he was in a little bit early and probably jumped. All right, Kowtow's still moving a bit, though. And, oh, he just couldn't find the right pressure. Zelda's, the moment you get in their zone, you know they're matching that people. I tried to go for that whip punish with the rapid boost. A good idea. Ooh, actually, that time caught him out of the phantom charge. Nice stuff from Kowtow. Get some damage. Ooh, oh, he went for another rogue knee. Almost caught it. 17. I feel like 17's hooking up something. He's getting so much data that I feel like we're going to see at least one more wild read attempt. Yeah, from, I'm seeing more data from being collected by Kowtow, if anything. That's he's being a lot game. more, uh, a lot, taking a lot of more of uh, consideration how he's approaching. Ooh, doesn't jump into the dense fire. Thankfully, would have been the end of the stock for sure. Doesn't manage to make it back. I wonder, I wonder if we're going to see maybe like another one hit in air type of thing from Kowtow. Oh, oh no, I we're going to see an you. upbeat from 17, yeah, I... but he does live. You got to wait to fan him out. Ooh. All right, doesn't make it up for now. Good stuff not rolling into that board smash. He's gonna have to watch out for this up though, because you do know that 17 will throw it out there. Oh <laughs> my god. How? Houseway. Oh, oh my god. Oh. And it, it, Kowtow was looking so nice, but 17, he just, it's weird because he got an opening and just like, it seemed like Kowtow kind of lost some confidence. He stopped going for those same reads he was going for earlier. Yeah, honestly, that Phantom is actually a really strong tool as well, dude. He, he, he specifically positioned himself to cover the platform with the Phantom and then above the, the top platform with an up pair. That was basically no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Just pure solid option coverage from 17. Yeah, I mean, Battlefield helps with that too because it cuts off some of those landing zones. So you can just cover a lot more space and be more relevant on those less trap situations. Those Zelda players, man. I think just the longer the set goes, the more data that character gets, the more it lends itself to making some explosive things happen. Because it just takes one or two big hits. Yeah, it's basically you have the character's meta is just trying to... It basically revolves around conditioning with Phantom for those clutch scenarios. And she doesn't have terrible burst options either. Like, she's got, like, dash attack is solid. She's got 
like a good good up good get off me options with a uh, neutral B and up B uh, that Nehru's love and that uh, Ferrars win. I know the names of moves. So yeah, <laughs> overall seventeen. Knowing the definitely recognizes the toolkit of Zelda and knows how to use that Phantom. The critical uh, component of Zelda's neutral. Yeah, that's it's it's crazy to think of the tool seven that uh, Zelda has, but then that Phantom just really kind of makes Zelda viable, if you will. Because before it's like, hey, I'll just hold my shield, stay at this range, I'm kind of okay. But Phantom just pressured you so much when you're off stage or trying to land at any point. Yeah, it's one of those interesting things because you have to set it up, and that requires you to be off stage in the first place. So yeah. It's just like one of those things that helps Zelda snowball ahead. Because when you're on the ground, look at that. You no. just die. You get blown up. But did you peep the kick first? Phantom tried to come out and Kowtow's like, we're not playing this game. I'm just Falcon kicking into your face. And that started it all. Yeah. So many characters have options for um, Zelda's Phantom. She just starts to charge it. You can't let her get away from that for free. Ooh. Ooh. The 42, though? Off the bat? Yo, Kowtow, turn it up a little bit. A B not gonna do it. Not quite yet. And okay, the Phantom though. Coverage. How are you getting up? You're not. Yeah. Out of an out of an air dodge. Ooh, avoids the dense fire and the dash attack. Actually, right there, on any other stage, I'm pretty sure he would have gotten smoked. But Yoshi's uh, story with the slant, it actually saved him getting hit by that uh partially charged phantom slash. I, I was going to say I'm terrified for 17 getting up right there. Manages to do it. Going to back up, throw out that Phantom again. Ooh. And uh, you thought you thought the jump air dodge was enough. It was not, but oh my, the forward air just on landing? Just yo. <laughs> oh, now that was actually a good option coverage. Because if, he, if, if that down smash got shielded, it would have been plus, And then he could have possibly up beat after this. Yeah. Oh, rare meaty setup in Smash. I love it when players do that. Yeah. I'm wondering if we're ever going to see 17 start going for down airs or camps actually on Captain Falcon instead of the Phantom setup. Because Falcon recovery is a little lackluster when it comes to being edge guarded. That is very true. Ooh. That word? We're just going to stare death in the eyes, not care? When you're that confident, it's not staring death. You just got to believe, apparently. There's more knocking on the door. You're like, I know, I know he's not going to open. Not today. Yeah. It's all good. Oh, okay. That discontinuing. Was the, that was a very Rekka esque with that uh, discontinued jab string into the upbeat. Oh, I thought he was going to go for the tri state, the, the grab of the ledge. <laughs> almost. Kata staying alive, though. But again, that same situation. Yeah, right there, man. Honestly, the best thing to do might just be to try and just hold on to the ledge until the Phantom goes through. Manages to get through that Falcon Kick and find a stock, thankfully, because it, it could have quickly turned out of a. Uh, Gotten out of hand for Kato. Yeah, I'm just not going off stage the rest of the game. That's my that's my new thing. <laughs> I'll just be like, all right, man. Whatever happens, wherever you hit me, I'm DIing straight up and I'm going to a platform. I am not going off stage for you to set this phantom up again. Uh gets the phantom the wrong way, and Kowtow's apparently just not caring about any of it either way. Yeah, Kowtow is looks like he's, they're they're cooking something. I can't tell what exactly, but these jumps got me a little concerned. Dash attack. Oh, going for that forward air. Not able to find its mark. Good up tilt, though. And then he... The, he actually, oh! oh. Okay. Nice. okay. <laughs> there, was, there was a little extra umph in that one, too. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm even at a plan. I don't know if he was going for a read or what, but he was just... Uh, that was more so just a coverage option to deny him trying to run in and get stage control back, which was smart. Yeah, that gave me Tekken vibes, to be real. Yeah, Kowtow's actually just playing a different fighting game. All right. <laughs> See, yeah, that was, we yeah. dude, we have every we got an audience. Nintendo <laughs> All Stars in the audience. I see Ooh, Isabel oh. and DK in one seat. Pikachu is by all by himself. No Ash catching to be found. I think that's Yoshi and Mario. Is that am I correct or wrong? Yeah, it's Yoshi and Mario. Yeah, and I see um, Falco and Lombardi, Fox. and my man Falco Fox as well. And then the, what? Here's the thing though. Why? How do we even get those? That must be a big plushie for those uh, those aviator shades to fit on that one Yoshi. Actually, I didn't even think of that. You're right. <laughs> it's a big head. I guess it's more so because his nose is so wide that it can just it can just <laughs> rest on top of the nose. <laughs> I hate Yoshi. In theory. Just 
I have a whole a very diplomatic anyway. esports commentary move to make. Say yeah. it with your chest. You hate that character. See me all right, but here we go. Speaking of characters, like, hey, here comes with a crumb. Opting to go for with this instead of the Falcon, even though he managed to narrowly win that last game. This is definitely more so a. Uh, now here we go. Now at this point, at this point, he's going to be able to uh, exert a lot of pressure with these hit boxes. Uh, make most of make the most of out of just uh, being able to use those disjoints and everything. Yeah, and he's just doing his best to steamroll. Out frame data the character. He's being checked all the way down. I don't think Kowtow's been completely wrong this entire game. Yeah, he, he, it's, uh, this switch doing wonders. You're still going to get that same speed and movement options that uh, Captain Falcon had, but now you have a disjoint to kind of deal with Zelda a little bit more. I'm noticing as well when he does that up B at a certain position under the platform, it's a mix because he's either going to land on the uh, the base of the stage or he's going to land on the platform. You have to guess which, otherwise you're not going to have enough time to punish him wrong. Yeah, it's a really good mix-up. I like Falcon that. Falcon does have that too. He can actually do the same thing with his up B from ground level onto the top platform. So uh, Kowtow, that's definitely going to translate well over to Krom. Yeah, I mean, Krom in a lot of ways is kind of like Captain Falcon of this war. Very fast rush down. Um, yeah. Like very committal options and huge explosive power. Yeah, uh, and in Smash 4, I described uh, Roy as, because Roy was awful in that game, I described Roy as Poverty Falcon. And this game, <laughs> it, the shoe was on the other foot. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I cannot believe that Dentfire did not actually take the stock. That was the weakest hit of it I've ever seen. Yeah, it's weird. Like, gave it a sour spot, even though it's a move as. Oh, imagine a fully charged move and a sour, a sour <laughs> spot. Pretty strange. <laughs> Ooh, fantastic read right there with the up tilt. Oh no, not actually able to punish it. Clearly that's the secret, you got a free fall and then Kowtow is like, I don't know what to do. For what's worth, it's kind of hard on Battlefield to figure out exactly where. Yeah, okay, good damage. Free. Good stuff from Kowtow. Gonna back up, he's like, you know what, 17, you can get on the stage oh. for free. Don't want to deal with oh. the phantom, it's because I have some, I have an opening that I'm sensing, that I'm reading the moment you come back on the stage. Yeah, Did that I was the crowd was again. You, you heard the goat chant in the back, Krom Krom, he's our man. If he can't do it, these uh, these lingering hitboxes can with that forward smash. Good stuff, finding the stock. Okay, yeah. spot dodge upbeat. I think it extended the hitbox because it hit the phantom. So it was active for like three seconds or something ridiculous yeah, that's like exactly that. that's <laughs> <laughs> exactly what happened. Exactly what happened. It was so unfortunate for 17. That Phantom definitely came out of the cut there. And 17 specifically put it there in order to find a stock if Kowtow stayed in that position. And Kowtow did just that. He was trying to find that damage in that specific scenario instead of just taking a safer option, which is understandable because at this point, why take a safe option? Just go for the risk when you have a three to one lead. Mm -hmm. All right, setting up the Celeste Trap again. This time, Kowtow's not even showing through it. Oh no, okay, just an upbeat. I thought we were gonna see something a little more dangerous. Went for the damage instead of the stage control. Yeah, honestly, the upbeat is. Yeah, okay, the smash. there we it's go. Up. And that's all that shit wrote. Good yeah, stuff. the upbeat was 26%, so that's mad off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I wasn't sure if he was going to go for the percent option or if he was gonna go for a potential kill setup by putting him off stage. Um, either way, the 26 put him in kill range for the next time he was in a similar position. Yeah, absolutely. And Zelda being a light character, bruh, I'm. I, mean, I really wish I could have access to that hand sanitizer. You fellas are really hawking me. <laughs> <laughs>